שלום שלום לכולם, סלאמו עליכם לכולו, and peace be unto all of the chosen elect called and those that remain faithful until the very end. This is Sibaya from Meet No Milk Ministries. Um, and I have another quick statement, a quick smack. I've already told you that uh, I'm going to bring out longer statements, but I want to address very quickly to show you that I'm not playing. You can see the title here. Um, Emily Rucker, Rubber Bullet Number One. Uh, this is the charge against TEOTW, end of the world as we know it ministries under Jacoba Evo and his brother um Tayu. They're going to jail. Emily Rucker, rubber bullet number one. Minister Jacoba, the man who is going into everlasting jail for attempted murder with a false deadly weapon and rubber bullets. The evidence of a false witness abusers, users, and extortionists. So you can see that um, we got the uh, boogeyman, T-E-O-W, who tells you that he doesn't show his face because he doesn't want to be idol worship, but in the same breath, he tells you he really doesn't show his face because he's scared that he's going to get in a fight everywhere he go because he starts fights. Um, and the liar, first of all, that says, I snuffed him first, which anyone that can see clearly and listen, see that he actually snuffed me. Um, he thinks that I've gone through some or stolen some of his prophecies or something like that. But I actually um, didn't know much about him. I've heard of him. And I think maybe somebody sent me a video maybe two years ago. And I don't really, like I said, deal with boogeymen. I've already made my judgments about boogeymen. And I ain't know what he believed until now. I knew it. He, he wasn't. A, he was against the come out message, and that's about all I knew, right? But we're gonna deal with his um, direct uh, falsehood of prophecies and his scandals. But you can see here that I have Emily Rucker on the left, and um, this is the right to my property, and because she has put her name out there and made a statement, this is public property. So I will fair use right now. I have every right to use her face. Um, and or we can go to litigation about uh, her, her accusations. Um, and then we have Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Cambridge, who used all of these people were a part of my group. Kenneth Cambridge. Now, all, all of these people, except this one, um, came at the last minute. I barely knew them, barely. Now, we have Kenneth, who is riding the train right now, um, as they have been hunting, as you see, they've been out of my group for, for months now, but they've been hunting for someone who is angry with me enough to take up their false witness. Um, and I've been done told people that after the first round of people that left my group was false witnessing all up and down Egypt, um, it was not necessarily my word against theirs, but Usually, that's what it comes down to in a war of words and media. And um, so after that point, I was advised by my counselors, never, never, never not record all the situations in the meetings and the judgments that was going on because people was falsifying what was said, uh, remembering things backwards, um, hearing things um, twisted and perverted and putting something on it that I never said. So I told you that he's a bum. He was homeless. Now this, once again, all of this is not about money. This is about false witnesses, abusers, users, and extortioners, right? So there's an MO by the way they work. And we know that Yad talks about how a lot of these will infiltrate um, the assemblies of Yah, And they have, and Yah talks about how many assemblies are full of these kind of people. Right. And so T E O W T, uh, whatever T E O T W would have you believe that someone doesn't have the right when they discover an extortioner, a liar, an abuser, or a user to remove them, as that is his very argument about being able to stand on your own and why he don't want a group because he doesn't want 
first of all, that responsibility, nor does he want somebody to do that to him, right? He doesn't want judgment and nor does he want to make judgment. But yet he stands up there and tells me, who am I to judge? But yet he's on there judging all day long. I like, this is stupid. This is stupid. And yes, all he has right now is a, a YouTube ministry and they do the same principle. When they don't like what someone said, what do they do? Boop, erase their comments. And so, hey, that's what it is. So if you're going to have a measurement line, make sure you have an um, equal balance, right? Now, once again, um, I didn't use any false witnesses against T-E-O-W, T, -E -T Yakoba. I only used his own statements. I used his own um, people. I used his own videos and I used himself against himself. Now, at best, at best, what he can accuse me of is misunderstanding or misrepresenting his statements, but I don't think so. Then that should be the argument he should want to take up. But to now go and find false witnesses, which was the premise by which he spoke on me in the first place, a false witness, this woman right here, Emily Rucker, She's crazy. That's what I said. Never said I didn't like it. Don't make no sense for somebody to let you in their house, let you in their ministry, and they don't like you. That's stupid, right? Um, she wrote a whole statement. Now, after this video, that we are going to be going down her list from 1 to 28, I believe, of all of her statements. And I'm going to show you through the evidence and through witnesses and some proof um, in that first video that she's lying. And then I'm going to show you the second video of the proof of me having the video, uh, not the video, the audio recording of my last two judgments with her. And I have my judgments with them as well as they're riding this train. Now, Yacoba made a statement in this video, right? And the statement was, in this video, should we flee or not? Something to that extent. He warned people about joining groups. And he used my group as a premise and her statement as the premise. And he used another woman from GOCC, right? Kana, who has been around for a long time. And GOC has been one of the first people with the group movement outside of Demona that he knows about on YouTube, right? Uh, with the come out message. Now he says that he'd been teaching the come out message before I existed. This nigga act like he's 60 years old. For, first of all, I'm 47 years old, 47 years old. And I didn't just learn about the come out message. I was born with the come out message 47 years ago. And at the age uh, my father was into African uh, voodoo worship, they had the Pan Africa return to Africa in 1970. Five, four, before I was born. And in 1976, he came to his awareness, learned his roots, and we, right? And so we had to come out message from over 30 years ago. 30 years ago, I came out. Travel back and forth because we never said, oh my goodness, we got one more year. The world is over, right? That's what you preaching though. That's what you, the end of the world, which you don't even understand. Ain't no end of world. Ain't no such thing. So sometimes, and people would accuse me of this, but everybody that I have spoken to, actually I've proved through time, right? Through time that I didn't false witness against any of them. David, all of them, uh, all of them through time, even though y'all call me false witnesses, through time it proved that what I was saying about them was true. And so through time, what I'm saying about Jacoba is going to be true, right? But you would see, I told you, lots of people write me about people. You have never seen me read a letter and use a witness outside of me having a real conversation, entering in that person's life and asking them questions about why they got kicked out of a group. Because I always know that when somebody gets kicked out of a group, whether it's good, cult, or not, there's a vengeance. There's an angry thing that goes through people when they get kicked out of a group and people look for vengeance. And I don't take up people's causes for vengeance, right? Not for vengeance. 
So after this one jumped on the train and think that y'all about to get a lot of sympathy for this 60 year old woman, I'm, I'm going to continue to expose her. This one on his feet, we'll see it right here. Kenneth Cambridge looking real handsome, but he's a bum. All right, he goes back and forth. Um, a shyster. He's a shyster. He's been with me for two years. And um, I don't speak about people that left my group until they uh, try to attack my group literally in a, in, in a way that will destroy their actual livelihoods. I'm not just talking about some money. I'm talking about um, not being able to settle and live where they live at peace without police investigations. They try to get me for murder and all they want to do is break up my group, right? My little old group, my little nobody see buyer that already got what? 2,000 subscribers and maybe one, you know, after the, out of those 2,000 subscribers, maybe 1,000 actually watch me, right? They want to destroy see by Yes, I go after people. I go after false shepherds. So this one wants to jump on the um, bandwagon. And Yakoba is so, how do I say, emotional. Um, I've heard the reports that he's a very vengeful, spiteful, and angry, ill-tempered, and um, uh, hasty man. Yes, hasty. Um, that his temper is really bad. And some people have brought me stuff about where he had some issues with Berean. And they, you know, and then they started fighting and they was threatened and with to shoot each other. And I know, yeah, that's why people like that talk big, right? Because they're violent, right? So he wants to take up his, he wants to continue in his vengeful way instead of just dealing head on, right? But what I said, we go toe to toe with the scriptures, with your doctrine and your works, right? Your obvious works. So now he wants to take up this course. He says, write a letter. So this dude, right? This dude, has joined Sister Connor, G-O-C-C, -C, and Jordan. He's following me. These people are following me everywhere I go, right? And they're following my trail, thinking that they're going to kill me along the way and take over my ministry. As I said, he is one that is a prophecy buff and a power buff. He wants women. He, he, he latches on to women in particular. He's not a man, right? Um, he is a habitual liar, right? from his own confession he just lies for no reason but he's a very um he's a slick he's a quick liar and i mean this dude is will exaggerate puff out his chest and act the part and he can act the part he definitely does and so he thinks that he's going to bring out his witness against me yakoba is going to use that and if he does yakoba is going to look after this time he's going to have two counts of murder two counts of murder and we're going to put more time on his everlasting time in hell, right? Because everlasting has a date to it too. <laughs> and then um, these two, these two, this one has been on a uh, comment campaign of slurring and slandering my name everywhere. Somebody's saying something about me, about me and Malka. And I told you I'm building up a case for her because what she's saying is actually against the law right? It's a defamation of character in the sense that she is claiming something illegal, that we've done something illegal and against the law, like child abuse. And so um, I wait for her. I'm going, I'm going to wait for her and her mother to continue their campaign because this will end up in another situation. So people need to be careful what they're saying. And what I, everything I say, I got proof, right? Um, and slander, defamation of character. These people with my group, so we know the truth, and so do they, and we can prove it. So, so they picked up T E O W uh, foolishness that he he's so angry at he buyer that he's willing to use anybody's evidence against me to prove me what uh, that I got a hundred followers and that I have millions of dollars and that I broke up marriages and, and caused divorces and that I took people uh, so I told people commanded people to sell their houses and take ten percent of all their WKs or all the, some of that is true, but still, eh, no, I did not command no such thing uh, that I, uh, that I enforced people to give me all their tithes. Eh, um, and I kicked out people that didn't have money. Eh, we're going to prove all of that to be a lie. Some other stuff that he said, we're going to prove all of that to be a lie and that these are users. 
users and abusers. This is this. These are people that have worked this all their life. Now, Sarah is not looking for money. She's just looking purely for vengeance. She's bored. She has nothing to do, no purpose to live. She's angry. She's angry at her, her mama for kicking her out when she got pregnant out of wedlock um, in her teenage years. Um, and she's angry for her mama because she needs her mama now. Unfortunately, she believes in the prophecy. She's following her mama. She needs her mama's money. This woman is not looking for money. She's looking for power too. Um, I'm going to show you how she's went through everybody's ministry with her uh, her husband, who's not her ex-husband, trying to be a first lady or a pastor herself. She believes that she's a pastor. He believes that he's a pastor and her anger and vengeance is what is fueling them, fueling all of these people to do what they do, right? So mind you, I've already told the story about her and her. Why did I speak about the story? Because these two people tried to go to the visa office and to the um, um, U.S. Embassy and file a false report against us to try to get us kicked out. Why did she do that? One, because she was angry that we kicked her out the group, even though she said I was okay with leaving the group and I was going to leave anyway. And I didn't kick her out. And two, she did not take the wisdom of the group. So therefore, they she got left out of the situation that helped us deal with all of the deportations and the list and all of that and getting tagged. Um, she did not take the wisdom and was removed out the group before it all went down. And so when she called herself going to the visa office trying to turn us in to renew her visa, they stamped her with a red stamp and told her she had to leave in 14 days. How do we know this? It's not word of mouth because every time my people go to the visa office, we wind up running into one of them with their situations. And someone else who was upset with me at the time ran into her at her and had a spiel of what they was doing. So it got back to me and they paid a price. They lost a lot of their stuff because they were covered just this too. They, she, she came with, was like 12 crates, <laughs> 12 crates of stuff. Yeah. All right. And so she's on the campaign, right? Following them, hoping that they will tear me down so they can, these two can step in. Now, once I say he wants to be a leader, He's not a leader of himself. He'll do it undercover. He needs to hide behind somebody else's operation and skirt. So right now he is uh, deceiving Sister Connor. He's watched her for years. You, you saw that I've never gone after Sister Connor. Though I've spoken out against GOCC, I've never gone after Sister Connor. I have a policy and they know that. I've never went after you who is one, though I've spoken of him. They've all gone after me. The reason why I don't go after people in particular like that about those that are spreading the come out message, even though I know their doctrine is false and they're in idol worship, is because y'all already told me that everyone um, of my elect is not going to come out through a true, she true shepherd, but I'm working my plan through the deception, right? Everyone is not going to hear see by his voice. There's going to be millions of people that come out through false shepherds. But when the trouble truly goes down, they are going to be proven to be false shepherds because Yah has revealed the true plan to them. They just know wilderness and they think they know where it is. And it's not a space. It's a dominion. It's not just being in the place. It's entering into another dimension. And there's a key to that. OK, so now he thinks that he's uh, broken down this dimension. He speaks high. And it's all taken from me. And um, she has written down all my work. And there's other two, Vivine, that has stolen every single, um, how do I say, PowerPoint, point by point, uh, mm -hmm. screenshot by screenshot of all my work. Hoping, private, private, and public. private and public, yes. Hoping that they would take over my work, my ministry, and continue to, uh, after they kill me and nobody listens to me, they can take the rest of my teachings that they think I haven't gotten out yet. All right. So I already know that. I already know that. On top of that, as y'all keep thinking that I'm trying to build a, a million people and a hundred people around me, do you think um, I can carry a hundred people moving from place to place? That don't even make sense. When I've already said, don't come to me. You cannot. Though some will walk with me. My group is closed. You don't understand. 
You don't, they think they know my operation, but it's always changing. My op people gonna hear me in the end. Don't worry. They gonna hear it in the end. Because these people are not gonna have answers when the real trouble comes. All right. So now, no T E O T W um wants to wage this war against me. Do the war, but fight fair, nigga. Fight fair. <laughs> fight fair. And I know that he's cut and he's bleeding. And so he's trying to take a low blow. I'm still standing. And um, he's using false witnesses. So I said this was going to be quick. This is only a prelude to more of what I'm going to show you, okay? And y'all stay tuned. The longer, y'all know how I do it, the longer evidences and witnesses is going to come out. We're going to bring Bible in. Now, I'm not going to say to you, you know the word. We're going to show you the word on it, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to play a small, I'm going to show you once again that, that I didn't kick somebody out when they went broke or because they went broke. I'm going to show you that this woman is is an extortioner and a liar, an abuser, and a false witness, right? But slightly, I'm going to show you that this woman has, um, now, unfortunately, I have to, I have to blur out, I have to blur out her personal information. You may think it's doctored up or not, but why don't you ask her to find out, okay? Um, her name is Emily Rucker. And I believe that that could be, I don't know if you can find out how much she gets, but I, I, I do believe that her being on retirement can be public information. Nevertheless, I already said in my witness that one, uh, that she had gotten her retirement in March of 2021. She had gotten her retirement, which was about, I said 900, right? 2022, right? She had gotten her retirement. Until she got her retirement, we have been taking care of this woman the whole time for a year and a half. And, a half. Um, and then I kick her out once she gets money. Think mm -hmm. about it. Think about it. She gets money and then I kick her out. So I kicked her out because she was broke. No, y'all. On top of that, at the same time, she lied about her a lot of her confession and everything like that. So we discovered some things. I didn't even know that she was 60 years old until some time. And she always knew that she was uh, up for retirement. Um, and on top of that, she was ex-military. So through the ex-military, um, she was able to get to some program that um, afforded her, as long as she stay online, $2,500 a month as long as she stay online, take these courses. So at the time that I kicked her out, she was making $3,000 a month. Yeah, a little bit over that. $3,500, something, something around that. She was making that much money. So that wasn't it. She paid her tithe on that. That wasn't it, right? That's all I request. Yeah, I requested that. But she also owed money. So I'm going to show you her, um, what is it called? Her retirement. She gave me a copy of it. And I can't prove this now. I can't prove this. I can only let you hear the witness through the end of the recording. She's saying, she's saying how much money. The day that I kicked her out, how much money she makes. Now, now you want to, you can change the argument now, but you're not going to be able to do that once I show you the real reason why I kicked her out. You can change the argument and say, well, I kicked her out because now she has money and she didn't want to give it up. But you can't do that because I'm going to prove that she, what I requested, she already gave. My issue wasn't her money. Okay. My issue was that she was a, a liar, an extortioner, an abuser, and a user. And she wasn't um, repented about it. She does play with tears and soft speech. And she does play with crying, but she'll easily change that in a matter of one second in a conversation from crying to looking like she want to kill you um, to going um, playing um, dumb. Like with her when I say dumb, I already showed you in the video like this. <sighs> I'm serious. I'm dead serious, y'all. OK, so I told you that she got three personalities and she'll play all three, whatever's going to work in the moment to get you to back off of her. All right, so let me show you. All right, y'all. So once again, I'm gonna have to um 
what do you call it? Blur out a lot of this stuff. So you can believe me or you don't. This is the copy that she gave me. Social Security Administration's benefit verification letter date, December 8th, 2021. B and C number, but I'll blur out a couple of the numbers, right? Emily E. Rocker, I could say that she gave her name. <laughs> I believe Emily Rocker, I can't give all her address, but you can see Virginia. Y'all can read this, right? Beginning February 2022, the full monthly Social Security benefit before any deductions is 924. The regular monthly Social Security payment is 924. We must round down to the whole dollar. Security benefits for a given month or paid the following month. For example, Social Security benefits from March are paid in April. Your Social Security benefits are paid on or about the fourth Wednesday each month. Type of Social Security benefit information. You are entitled to monthly retirement benefits. Date of birth information. Date of birth shown on our records is 1960, okay? So we know the rules of YouTube, um, but for the sake of slander, um, we, got, we got an issue here, okay? Now I'm going to play the end of the last um, judgment meeting that she called. Mind you, I didn't call her to this meeting, nor did I um, set up the first one. This was a complaint between her roommate. And I was asked to become a witness for like the third, fourth, fifth time of their issues, okay? As the judge, as the leader of the group, right? The second one, she called. She asked to speak to me. And the only thing she really wanted to know was her status with the group. Does that sound like somebody that wanted to leave or was upset about leaving? And all of them had the same issue. All of them, the only thing they wanted to know is, can I come back? Okay? So I'm going to play that. Give me a second. Okay, I'm back in. So those of you who have watched my quick smack or my quick judgment about this sister and T.O. taking up her false slanderous report, which Torah talks about that, you can see here Emily's judgment. And I played like maybe a few minutes of the beginning to give you some context. I will play the whole thing, but her voice is very low. So we have to, sub this is work. It it's going to take time. And once again, everybody is in here and there's certain things that is being said that is none of your business. It's none of your business. So I can't give you everything, but I'll give you enough to know the context of what actually took place in this so-called judgment that she asked for. She called me to. Okay? So let's play. I'm done. And I want to sound some cool. Um, My decision is made. Be before she leaves, I uh, want to make sure that we don't have anything that that belongs to anyone whether it be uh, the brethren, whether it be the house, that when, when you leave, it's clean. That there's no more offenses being made and there's no more manipulation being had. So let me give you context. So you can hear after an hour and 50 minutes of going back and forth with her, the decision was made. She got to leave our group. I didn't, y'all, the same house that we got for her, she still lived in. She lived right next door to mom, right? Right next door. The difference is, is that we were no longer going to pay her rent. Now she had her money and she owed. And she didn't, she owed, I'm going to tell you the context, you'll hear it, is that she had extorted $3,000 out of one of the brothers while she was double dipping with me. The whole time, She's been living her whole life like this, all her life. And um, we have been supporting her. The woman, um, once she had turned 60, um, started believing that she didn't have to work anymore. This is her retirement didn't come in yet. So we have been supporting her the whole time. My, our issue with her is that, yes, she behaved crazy from beginning to the end. She was dumped on me, but I tried to save her. She did not forsake what she calls her confession of life. 
of um, of an affair with a pastor um for some years i say about 20 because i can't remember all the details but it was a long time in which she had wound up getting pregnant and have an abortion of twins because he forced her and this caused her to um have to remove her, remove her wound at a young age and that she has psychological problems she does not produce estrogen and so she is mentally unstable it's called demonic and I say again that the only way you can uh, remove that is through the word of Yahushua by forsaking and confessing and repenting, for and right. And so she's not; she has not done that. And so, how can I help her if she's going to continue to move in this emotionally instability and not confess and not repent and not forsake the behavior and acknowledge why she's like this? With that being said, um. Many people in the group have bear witness here. I didn't turn anybody away from her. These are their witnesses about what they have experienced with her in the past year and a half, I believe, that she was with me and with the group. And um, we, we made our decision that she was not after she had offended her roommate, after we had been um, between me and the council, Mama Rita had been helping paying her rent, giving her food, giving what they need, and the other sister. By the time she got her retirement, and by the time she got her um yeah. the grant, she had became very arrogant and her she's always been nasty, but her nastiness had increased double fold. Double fold. To the point is that she was saying very wicked things to her roommate about the food and withholding her food and a lot of stuff y'all it's just this is not the time and uh at that point that's what it was decided and so her being 60 years old i ain't want nobody to accuse me of kicking somebody homeless out in the street some old lady that was stranded by herself she was not she absolutely was not she still lived in the apartment that we had us uh, secured for her which was right next door to us y'all right next door she did not want to make peace with her roommate, so I had to move her roommate out from her because she was harassing her roommate and treating her very nasty. So we had to move her roommate out. Therefore, she lived alone and had to pay the rent all by herself. She had the money. And so this is proof that she had money for those of y'all that think that I kicked somebody out because they didn't have money. She owed, she owed some people because we gave and some of it was loans, okay? Here we go. It doesn't have to be today. I don't, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be arranged, but Miss Emily? Yeah. No, um, she got some, you know, this business, Yeah. there's money arrangements between Honey, Mama, and, and Rob, yeah. right? Now, like I said, um, just cause you know, I'm, nobody, like as far as Honey is concerned, if Honey were to continue to deal with you, and you were to continue to pay for that rent, that's when you, you got it now. Right, you know, you know, made it so that nobody would live with you, but that was our hookup. Hopefully, you don't offend Honey anymore because you know if you do, you're on your own, he will kick you out, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that's a whole story about how she behaved with her landlord and almost and was getting kicked out. We had to intervene while we were paying him. So the money exchanges was between Mama Arita and him to keep her so he wouldn't kick her out, and we had no place to put it no more. So that business had to be sealed up. But essentially, I don't understand so, all the details about. So just so that everybody is clear on the the business arrangement between my mom and Miss Emily, um, you owe back rent for ten thousand five hundred pounds, which was a lot of for you to pay back in lump sums or not lump sums in periods pockets as you had time. But at this point, I'm going to ask you for that, and then for the month of May, you choose to stay. In Hani's apartment, the rent is seven thousand pounds. I'm going to ask you again for half that rent for the month of May for you to decide whether or not you want to stay or if you want to go. So come June, you would pay him seven thousand pounds directly if that's what you choose to do. So you're going to give me fourteen thousand pounds. I would say in the next after Shabbat, maybe Sunday or Monday. And there's no reason that you shouldn't have it based upon what you make it right now. Okay. So let me give context. Don't get scared at the numbers. Uh, pounds, <laughs> I think it's like 18 to $1. 18 to $1. So um, 
I can't sum that up. Y'all do the, y'all do the math, right? Whatever that was, she could afford it. That was the point. And they made a deal. I ain't had nothing to do with that deal. They made a deal. What I did was supply the other needs. I didn't, I, through the ministry, didn't pay her rent in particular. I paid part of, um, part of the other sister's rent. So we went half and half on that. And we had deals of how we, what we were giving as a gift and what needed to be paid back through, um, through loans. Right. So I didn't have any loaning situation with her. That was between mama and Rita Arras and no interest added or anything like that. And they allowed her to pay it back slowly since she kept promising that she would have the money and that, um, and that she would be able to, um, pay her own, pay on her own. So now that, now that we have come to a decision there and we know that she got lump, a lump sums of money, we're saying pay it back, right? They didn't ask for it all. They asked for some of it back. You want to tell everybody what you're making? Okay, I mean, meaning like, if you want to come up with a complaint later, I don't have it. There's no reason why you should have it. You shouldn't have it. So she's just mentioning the number that I just showed you from her social security, right? And I said, and, and she's about to tell you about her grant. For so she, uh, you see me repeating it because she's whispering it. I made her tell the people that she owe and the group because she had been lying to the whole group and going around double dipping and telling people, I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money. That's what she had been telling people to extract stuff out of them from the first time I met her on the phone. And she had extracted thousands of dollars from this ministry. And the whole time, I'm telling you, to this day, she could be lying about everything from the beginning. Right? But this was the situation. She had came with money and spent it all in the less than four, month, four months when we helped her. She spent it all while she also extorted 3000 from another brother by lying while I was still giving her money to move, pack her things, rent a car, all of that. When she came, the brother that brought her there or the that brought her there to me, dropped her off to me, switched on her. And all of a sudden, after a few months, two months, she had no money. Then she had some extortion and laundry um, scandal on the bank with the bank uh, or, or, or with her bank account and some false scandal business where she says they got into their bank, got into her bank and took three thousand dollars. That was supposedly the last of her money when she was money laundering, y'all. She was money laundering. So then we had to take care of her some more with a rebuke for doing such a thing. She ain't stupid. And then we come to this point and there's so much to the situation. Now, it would sound like I'm speaking all about money. No, I'm speaking about usury, extortion, lies, and manipulation, which is against Torah that she had been doing in the group for a year and a half. And now that she had gotten her money, 3500 a month. She was already stingy, we knew. And all of this she was saying that the Holy Spirit was upon her. And I'll give you, you'll hear the testimony of what she was saying that the Holy Spirit was moving her, which was blasphemy. Which was blasphemy, what she was saying about the Holy Spirit and what it was saying to her and doing to her, whatever. It was time for her to go. I see that she didn't take in the word. She uh, was exuding hatred when her roommate brought her in front to speak about what was going on. 
She was looking and shaking like a crazy woman, like she wanted to kill her roommate and was not apologetic at all, at all. Did not want to make it right. She's saying in this thing, I want to make it right, but she never wanted to make it right and never did. She didn't make it right with the brother Hugh that she extorted $3,000 from, from him. She never made it right with me. And everyone took advantage of my soft heart because this um uh uh this this peculiar ones YouTube channel, which I'm working on that through litigation, someone has stole a private Zoom meeting and gave it to somebody who wasn't a part of my group to put it up about how I was gonna collect tithes and help those that need it. And when that video went up. All these people came to me. I'm I'm catching a lot of people that says, oh, I found somebody that's willing to help the people and give the money. All I got to do is show up and pretend to be poor. All right. So let's finish. No reason why she can't pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually. Yeah, I know that. Don't calculate it. Just I'm not I'm only doing that. I'm only doing that for y'all understand the mentality that's just yeah. happening here. Yeah. Let's switch from zero money yeah. to that yeah. amount of money. Her attitude is just switch. Yeah. 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 That's right. So I'll let you right. know. Oh, yeah, no, you want to let everybody cheat super ties. We finally find out, right? Oh. That is. Oh. You know what? Oh. Then she tried to uh, throw me a, a sneak blow because I, she had to expose to the people that she had money, that she was lying, and why she was behaving like this. Tell me, I paid my ties. Yeah, yeah I know you want to let everybody know you sent the ties by request. No, you asked me, and I said yes. You said, should I be, should I pay five of that money? I said, yes, you should pay ten percent on any income you get. And you were like, oh, oh, okay. To the point that I questioned if you'd ever paid tithes before because you asked that question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she paid the tithes on that that money. That's it. I asked for nothing else. Because that was she owed. So do, you, so do you plan on? Do you hear what I'm saying? How am I going to take ties with somebody that don't have no money? I don't roll like that. What is it to take from her? I've been paying her. We've been paying for her the whole time. And she extorted money out the group. When we found out that she actually had $14,000 and, and was no account with $14,000 just disappeared to only um ten to twelve suitcases or fourteen. I don't even know how many suitcases. But or uh, uh, Justice had ordered her to get rid of. They was in the hotel before the flight, throwing away half of the stuff that she was buying. And a lot of people do that. They be like, "Oh, I got this lump sum of money." They start shopping like crazy, like this, like like To's dumb one right there. Spent all their money before they came out. And then came out broke and then expected the people to take care of them when they mismanage their own money. Now they're going to mismanage money that comes for the people that really is trying. So she's mad now because she's exposed to everybody for her lies and her abuse. Uh, Miss Emily, uh, paying back for the uh, who and anybody else. Or, or, or pay me nothing back. Or uh, she should have paid you back this money though. She thought it didn't. So we talking about when well, you gonna make it right paying back Brother Hugh that you extorted three thousand, but Hugh, she never did that. We didn't enforce it. She wasn't gonna do it after a year and a half. And I just said she don't have to pay me nothing back. I don't remember what it was, but we had a calculation from what. Well, I know everybody would like to know what the money is going to be at before you leave. Okay. I don't know. She said, I'll talk to you about it.
Nothing happened. Never did. Never did. Yes, you did. Yeah, but at this point, because yes, you did. No, you have been doing a good job of reporting to me your money and your finances. Um, but at this point, since you're no longer walking with us, I have to collect on it, and I can't collect on it in pockets. I need to collect on it in one lump sum. So, again, Sunday or Monday, you'll give me fourteen thousand pounds, and I will let Honey know that you were living in that apartment alone, so that you can decide if you want to stay or not and y'all can talk about it and hopefully you can learn how to have a better attitude in dealing with him We're going to subscribe, but I don't know if y'all hear. She um, is busting out tears now and saying something to the fact, I want to make a right with Avia. No, she didn't never did. and never did. Right after she left out of that, the next day she snuffed her. Yep, snuffed her. So we had, had to move this sister out of there because she was bullying her in the house. Why she crying? Oh, she said Why she crying? She lived right next door to everybody. Like literally, she live. She lives in the complex that we live in, right next door. And then we live all around the corner. We wasn't going nowhere just yet. She wasn't going nowhere. She got money now. Avia's moved out. She was happy and she got the place to herself and nobody got to bother her. Why is she crying? Where is this uproar that she's claiming that happened? Just yeah. Because. Where's the uproar? That we, were, that we were throwing verbal attacks, verbal stones at her. Yeah, you where's know? the uproar? It was quiet. Where's the uproar? They all are sorry when I make that decision to act like they're going to do right. And then they don't. And then they get arrogant and then want to go out on, on a spree to slander my name. Why is she crying? If I was such an occult, why is she crying? If I was so wicked, why is she crying that she's... Because the only thing that stops is that she can't come to my feast days anymore. My home, my home. I'm saying she can't come to my home anymore. This is where we keep it, in the community place. She can't come anymore. She can keep the Shabbat, she can keep the law, she can keep the Torah. She just can't keep the Shabbat with us, right? If they not trying to rock with the word, right? Then be gone. How about that? But we do Torah. And what I just did was New Testament Torah. New te Testament Torah. Now ask the woman how many times, as she said, meeting after meeting after meeting about the same situation that she never made right. Never. Right after that, she walked around like nothing ever happened, snuffed her nose at all of us, and was looking proud. And then once we had to leave, she was watching our every movement like a stalker because she was right next door to us when she saw that we were packing. She packed and made a flight the same day that we did, thinking that we was doing a turnaround and that she was going, what, we a uh, worm after us. Mm -hmm. And it backfired because she didn't know our plans. We were leaving. So once again, I didn't take that woman to Turkey. She could have went to Africa. She was following me. Mm -hmm. She was stalking me. We left and we was in Turkey and we had a good time in Turkey. Mm -hmm. That's it. And we, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So going back, y'all heard the beginning of the matter that she asked for the meeting. You heard some of what the meeting was about. You heard the end of the meeting that she had money. You don't hear me asking for her money at all. I'm not asking for anything in that. 
It's about the extortion from, that she took and lied about from everybody else. And it's about other things. So we will talk about the other things or you will hear about the other things in the rest of the judgment. Okay. Now, we don't do extortionists. We don't do abusers, users, liars, cheaters, lazy. And you think that people, our black people, as corrupt as we are, is not going to come over here and try to do the same thing? Now, you're going to find out that I, see Baya, am what I said I am. And I have done everything that I said. Um, is there not mistakes made at times? Sure. Mm -hmm. Have I made mistakes? Sure. All right, this man can fall. But I didn't fall nowhere. I didn't do anything evil to anybody. I didn't take anything from anybody that belonged to them. And I say again, that anybody within this group that thought that they gave me some tithes and is upset at me, when I show you the amount of tithes that they give me, it doesn't equate to the amount of the thousands that they took. It doesn't amount. They gave me nothing. And we're not doing bank here. It's not a bank that you put, this is what the Christian church, you put $1 in and no works. And you about to get a million back and no works. The ministry is about the work that the ministry is doing. And if the work, you won't drink the water, then I'm taking the water back and you got to go from my dinner table. It's just that simple. Right, Yacoba? Right? I'm wrong? Talking about I'm talking to grown-ups like that. You out your mind. We talking about grown-up business. Mm -hmm. But I got something grown up for y'all. This is the problem with our people. Because they grown before they grew up. Doing grown-up wicked business, but it's really child business. So here's a song for all of you, Sarah. It was this easy, y'all. Right now, it's only the first step. I'm, it was this easy. Her, Kenneth. Uh, Sarah, Priscilla, Oral, Vivine, the first step was if your brother repent, if your brother confess and repent, and they didn't do that, yet they got two times and three times and four times and five times and six times to witness, oh, this is going to stop us to see why he's cleaning up shop. We rehearsing the acts of righteousness, and every time that I did want it, I get clear about y'all's word. Oh, oh, they're not supposed to get three times to lie about the same thing. Oh, I supposed to have kicked them out a year ago. Oh, they wasn't supposed to skip over the threshold when they came up and gave lying confessions about their lives, and I discovered that they were lying. Who lying to see Baya? No, they were lying to Yahweh, and y'all not gonna not y'all not gonna sack them. You come into the house of Yah and lie to the priest to get the money for the real needy and the widows and stuff like that, the spiritually um, meek and humble and poor. You come as a user to steal the money for who is really needed for, and you think Yah's not going to get you back? Yacoba, you done lost your mind. Emily already lost her mind. Mm -hmm. Kenneth is sealed in losing his mind, and I'm about to do another short to show you how manipulative and lying he is. And that uh, T-E-O-W, as someone sent it to me and I saw it, I see what the scam is. Oh, boy, they think they're doing something. On the next note, continue to see the righteous acts of judgment go forth by prophetess. See, by Meek No Built Ministries. I ain't playing. And I hope it discourages all of you. Niggas, nickaboos. Nickaettes, Nickaites, Hebrews, because I ain't no Hebrew Israelite, and alike, stay away from Sebaya's ministry. Do your own thing. Selah. One of our favorite songs from Akili and Me is a song called Sorry. Yes. It's pretty simple, and it's a word that all of us should say sometime. 
is sorry is just a first step, right? First step in repairing the relationship with the person that you hurt. So we are going to, of course, in true Wilson World fashion, we're going to give you a jam on the sorry song. Are you ready for the jam? I say sorry. Break it down a little bit. Break it down, break it down, break it down. Now, the song says we say sorry when we do wrong, right? But sometimes we hurt others with our actions and we don't even know it. We didn't yeah. mean to. That wasn't our intention. Have you heard that word, intention? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. What does intention mean? Intention is when you mean to do something, like when you do it on purpose. Yes, yes. So that was your intent. It was done with purpose or purposefully. Excellent, Jay. So sometimes we hurt the people that we care about and we didn't even mean to. But guess what? We can still say sorry because we're sorry for how they feel and we want them to know that we care about them, okay? So we can still say sorry, okay? Now, guess what, guys? It's saying sorry just for children no no, no way bring it back uh, sorry, sorry.